Chris Haney's killer will remain behind bars until further notice. Following a stabbing attack, Janusz Walus's prison release has been postponed until he's fully recovered. Last month, the Supreme Court of Appeal ruled that he be released within 10 days. Walus has served 30 years of a life sentence for the SACP leader's 1993 murder. This week, we saw scores of protesters outside the Jose Mampuru prison in Pretoria demanding that he not be released. ENCA's Heidi Jokos has the details and joins me in studio. Now, Heidi, has there been any movement uh, since then? What's the latest? Uh, not necessarily, Anli. The only indication that we have is from the Minister of Justice spokesperson, Crispin Perry. Uh, that statement that was released last night, given the fact that it is, uh, yesterday was day 10, it was the deadline for um, for the release of Janusz Wallace after the Constitutional Court ruled that he should uh, be released out on parole after serving almost three decades. Mm -hmm. um, what uh, the minister's spokesperson has indicated is upon agreement with the state attorney and Wallace's legal team, uh, they are going to wait for him to be in a better condition given the fact that he was stabbed on Tuesday night. But the details remain very sketchy because we need to understand exactly where he is, if he's going to be sent back to Jose Mampuru prison. Uh, and then be released and uh, exactly how the, the whole process is going to unfold. And perhaps the details are rather sketchy because we do know that there has been much outrage and anger around that decision, given the fact that uh, many feel that uh, Janusz Wally should have not been granted parole. And uh, given what he did to Chris Hani, uh, a man that was... Uh, integral when it came to uh, really freeing this country and when it came to the talks because of what was going on with apartheid. So um, perhaps that's why we don't know the details. And I've said this many times on air before, but I've never wanted to be in a prison as much as I do right now to really <laughs> understand uh, what's going on because we just don't have the details. And it's probably also because um, the Minister of Justice correctional services as well as home affairs, they know that there's going to be much outrage and perhaps his life is going to be a danger should he be released. Also given the fact that we don't even understand or know the details around the stabbing. Why did that inmate stab him? Mm. What object was used? How serious is that stabbing? All we've been told is he's in a stable condition mm. and he's recovering in a Department of Correctional Service Health Facility. Of course, we also don't know anything at this stage about the parole conditions, and those are going to be critical not only for his release, but for the next three years as he serves out parole in South Africa. We heard earlier this week that that decision... Uh, that he will not serve his parole in Poland as he had requested that he will serve his parole in South Africa. And as you say, there are lots of complexities around the issue. Has the Department of Correctional Services indicated when they're likely to make those parole conditions public? No, I think the only thing that we, that we know that's clear at this stage is the fact that he will be serving his parole here in South Africa. I think there was much confusion as to how that's going to work given the fact that he's not a South African. Um, and all we know for now from the Department of Home Affairs is that he will be serving here in South Africa. But it's up to the Minister of Justice, Ronald Lamola, to provide those details around the parole conditions. And I think they are rather preoccupied with other very pressing matters in the country at the moment, for example, the president. Um, but at the end of the day, they do have pressure to uh, make an announcement and a decision. And I think the, the stabbing um, and that incident has bought the minister some time before we can come out and say these are the parole conditions. But w how is it going to work? Where is he going to serve parole? Given the outrage that we've seen in the country so mm -hmm. far at the moment, um, are they going to protect him? How is that whole process going to work? So the minister actually doesn't have much time because according to that constitutional court ruling, which is the highest court in the land, they've indicated that he should be released on parole within 10 days. So all we've heard from uh, the Minister of Justice, Ronald Lamola, is the fact that the two parties have come to an agreement that they will... Uh, decide when he will be released once he's in a better condition. I was just about to ask you whether there is an agreement from both Janusz Walus and his legal representatives that this should be the course of action, because I can only imagine that for a man who's spent uh, the better part of three decades in prison, he should be relatively anxious to to leave prison, but also given the fears around his safety, that that process needs to be managed very, very carefully. Yes, so we know that the Minister of Justice did indicate in a very short statement yesterday that both parties have come to an agreement that once he is better, uh, he will... Uh, there will be a discussion and an announcement about his release uh, on parole. But the, the, the issue here is 
we don't understand how serious the stabbing is. All we know mm. is the upper body and the fact that he still needs to recover might speak to the seriousness of that stabbing. So for now, Anneli, we just have to wait for mm. the Minister of Justice to make those announcements and to indicate what those parole conditions are going to look like. Do we know whether, let's say hypothetically, it takes a month or two for Janusz Wallis to recover from this stabbing? Um, because recover is also quite a broad term. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, to recover to the point of being able to walk, to the point of no pain, exactly. So let's say it takes a month or two. Does the Constitutional Court make allowance for that kind of a situation in its ruling, or is that also very much up in the air? I think that's very much up in there because I don't think anyone expected or yes. uh, predicted that yes. this would have happened. Uh, there was much shock on Tuesday when the announcement came out that he has indeed been stabbed. So I think there is some con some consideration for the fact that this was an unexpected uh, incident that took place and they are, of course, trying to manage that. But this is boiling under and if this is not handled very quickly and uh, properly, it's going to be uh, quite a challenge, especially because the Minister of Justice doesn't really have room to move, Anneli. It's mm -hmm. the Constitutional Court, the highest court in the land, that has ruled according to the Constitution that um, Janusz Wallace is il eligible for parole, given the fact that he has served three decades. So the Minister, mm -hmm. again, doesn't have much time and uh, perhaps Again, this has bought him time to say, well, he's not in a stable condition. Let's perhaps just wait until things get better. Mm. And, of course, the social pressure. We've seen a number of protests, uh, not only outside Khosi Mampuru prison, but uh, the N1 highway blocked for three hours mm. uh, uh, on Thursday in both directions as uh, people protested outside the offices uh, of the Chief of Justice against that parole decision. So we'll keep our eye very keenly uh, on developments there. Thank you very much. Heidi Jokos bringing us that update.